Hey y'all, good morning. I hope everyone's day is starting out really well. I have been meaning to sit down and talk to y'all about Sephora Play for a long time now and I've just never found an opportunity to do it. I've just received my February bag, which has already been unboxed, unbagged to high heaven. That's not what this video is about. I want to look at it as a cruelty-free beauty lover and also YouTuber. Is it worth it for people who are cruelty-free? Because I kind of initially thought it would be. Um, we'll get into that in a minute and also just in general is it worth it so I wanted to talk about those things today so let's get into it so I'm sure everyone knows already but Sephora play sub box 10 bucks a month which is one of the cheapest ones out there you know I've heard a lot of people say really in the reviews on sephora.com of the play box that this should be a essentially a free gift each month for VIB Rouge members and I quite like that idea uh, maybe not every month maybe once a quarter or something like that, a free box of samples for the Rouge members. I'm sure that would be probably an expensive undertaking for them, um, but I think that would be very nice if they figured out a way to make it affordable for them. Anyways, just off topic. So this was the February bag and I will briefly run through it very briefly. Like I said, it's already been unboxed to high heaven. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. Um, I will say this much, this bag, which is my third bag by the way, I have not had this subscription for long, uh, so much better than the last one, which on the front of it said like sweat is just another way to glow. Uh, that that just seemed gross to me personally. But this month I received a Bite Beauty Multi-Stick in the shade Cashew. I was actually kind of excited about this. Very generous sample. I don't know if this is a formula I'm gonna like or not. I haven't tried it out, but I love Bite Beauty and it is a cruelty-free product. So this is something I was very happy to receive. Then I got a Too Faced Lip Gloss, the Lip Injection Glossy in Milkshake. I used to love the original lip injection, just the clear one back in high school. Oh my god, I used it just constantly all day. Now I'm not into lip plumping anything and I can just, the smell brings me back. It, I don't like the tingle. This will be given away to someone. And unfortunately those were all the cruelty free products included in this month's bag. But I also received a mascara sample, the Sephora Lash Craft Length and Volume Mascara, a moisturizer from Clinique, the Pepstart Hydro Blur Moisturizer, and then a Origins Ginseng Eye Cream. This is something, Origins was a disappointment to me when I found out they weren't cruelty free. I just had it in my head that they were because basically because of their brand marketing, everything that they do almost seems like natural, organic, very eco-friendly, um, plant-based based etc and so I was actually very shocked to find out that they test on animals and then the perfume sample I got was the Tom Ford Neroli Portofino I don't like any Tom Ford perfumes I haven't tried a whole lot but like black orchid oh oh my god I think honestly his perfumes are just like way too chic and sophisticated for my like first class white trash nose or something like that because it's not for me. Give me like, I don't know, a juicy couture any day. So those were the five samples plus the perfume sample that you get each month. And that was for the month of February. I will say this right off the bat. Um, I think this is way better. If you're not cruelty free, I think this is way better than any other subscription boxes on the market today. I have seen countless Ipsy, Birchbox, everything else unboxings because I love YouTube. I watch a ton of beauty channels. I have seen all of them. I have never once signed up for anything but this and I never will really unless something changes in the future but I've never once had an inkling of interest in Ipsy or Birchbox. And part of that is based on personal experience because through work, through my job, I actually had a very I don't know, it was kind of a distant relationship with a skincare company that used to be sold at Ulta. And when they lost their Ulta contract, I don't know what happened, but they, they stopped selling at Ulta and they had a bunch of stock to liquidate and it was gonna go bad soon. And what did they do? They sent it to a subscription box service to distribute it, to get rid of it. They were just dumping stock that was about to expire, essentially. And I know not all companies, all the samples, etc. It's not all like that, but that one experience did kind of leave a bad taste in my mouth and from being kind of on the inside I can see things like oh I knew I know that product has been recently discontinued now it's showing up in the subscription box they're just trying to ditch stock so anyways just kind of tainted my view I guess you could say so in a sense I think Sephora's sub box Sephora play is actually 
pretty fun. I think $10 is a good price. Yeah, it's $120 a year, so when you think of it that way, what you could buy for that money, I mean, you could buy two naked palettes and have some change left over um, for all the samples you're getting each month. But I will say this, is that it, it's really fun. It is. It's fun to get that little email, to know what's on its way, to arrive home from work and have this little goodie box of surprises to open up, to get to try new products, etc. Now, what bums me out is that I had it in my head. I really did when I signed up for this. I truly thought that at least half, if not the majority of the products would be cruelty free. And yes, I knew Sephora had some non cruelty free brands, but when you kind of look at the list, there are a ton of cruelty free brands. I mean, tons of them. So I thought surely, surely um, the boxes would be filled, you know, 50 to 75% each month with cruelty free products that I could try. Then for my channel, I could say like, oh yeah, I did try this new product and I liked it or I didn't like it. That way I'd have an opinion, be able to give it advice, recommendations, etc. Um, so I thought it would be a good option. And I thought, you know, with the non-cruelty free products or products that I can't get to, I have and I know a lot of women in my life that can either use them or need them. And so I thought for me it was going to be a total win-win situation. I'd get to try out stuff. Yeah, there'd be some things I can't use, but whatever, they can go on to someone else to use. Um, unfortunately, at least for these first three boxes, the vast majority of the products have not been cruelty free. But again, that's that's the gamble and that's what these sub boxes are. You are rolling the dice, you're betting $10, rolling the dice each month and hoping that you'll get something usable in return. So my takeaway on this is if you're cruelty free and you're thinking like I was, like, oh, you know what? There'll be a couple non cruelty free products. I can pass those on and then the majority of them will be and I can use them. Um, I don't, I wouldn't, um, because from my experience, it's like 25% cruelty free. There may be one or two cruelty free products in here and then the rest are not. I believe though, and I may be wrong about this, I'm gonna double check before I, this video goes live, but I'm pretty sure Birchbox is now cruelty free. I may just have totally made that up, pulled it out of thin air, but I'm pretty sure I heard that or I saw it on their website or something that they only accept cruelty free products or maybe it's Ipsy that I'm thinking of. I don't know, but I swear I heard one of them, okay? So if you wanna do a sub box and you're cruelty free, that may be a better option. However, I think like for the value, the products that you're getting, I mean, each month you are only getting Sephora level brands. And yes, some of it is the Sephora brand, which admittedly is, is not as expensive, um, but I think they have some great products. I highly wish they were cruelty free. There's quite a few of their items that I really like. So I think for 10 bucks, the value is actually pretty good. It's gonna be very reputable brands. That is that is a big caveat I've always had with Ipsy and Birchbox is that there's all these no-name brands. And yes, maybe you're finding new brands to enjoy or whatever, but a lot of times it's just, they're just no name brands, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'd much rather have something from Too Faced and Bite Beauty and Sephora um, than I would from previously unknown brands that I, I have no idea who they are. I'd have to look up their testing. It, anyways, you get what I'm saying. So that is where I'm at right now. I guess in summary, I would say if you are strictly cruelty free and you don't want a bunch of extra samples, you have to figure out who to disperse them to, it's probably not a good option for you. Otherwise, you know, if you want to spend the $120 a year, it's it's kind of fun maybe hop on the waiting list and as of right now I am not planning to do any monthly unboxings unbaggings etc I just it's just not something I'm really interested in however you will probably see samples as long as they're cruelty free in my monthly makeup baskets um, that's where I like to rotate products test things out give reviews and also finish up products make sure I'm rotating through things each month but of course, as always, let me know, do you have Sephora Play? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Did you used to have it? Did you cancel? Are you on the wait list? Do you want it, etc.? What are your thoughts? And I will see y'all in two days in my next video. Don't ever forget, it is perfectly okay to just be small town famous. I love y'all very much. Have a wonderful day. Go out there, kick ass, and take names. Love y'all. Bye.